Yes, welcome along to episode 5 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch counting down to the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. Gavin, I got up early this morning. Come I was on. up about 7-ish, which is early for me. I was hoping to get my hair cut for the show well. because it's a holy show. <laughs> got up early, went in because the barbers are all open early now that we're out of lockdown. Went in, there was 10 ahead of me. I said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Knew you'd be waiting. Didn't want to leave you waiting. Didn't want to leave the cameraman waiting. Yes. So I left it. So I'm going to get a cut after the show. So next week, I'm going to have a new haircut. Yeah. Looks yeah. well, looks well. That's embarrassing. Uh, well most. done with your uh, tipping in the race and post on Sunday with the Gaelic football. 30 points win, somebody told me. You're embarrassing me now, Gavin. A pal sent it to me, yeah. What's yeah. that? So yeah, it was know. a good... Mayo uh, did the business, got all the goals that I wanted. So it was fantastic. Okay. How was your week? Yeah, Grant. Uh, won during the week. Lost of the weekend. Heavy ground and punting. Don't really go no um the weekend promised a lot in sandown and punchtown things didn't pan out maybe as we, as, uh, as expected but yeah. that's racing we are hoping for the best weekend of the year we probably didn't get that not quite no no we're um, going to talk about nikki henderson we're going to talk about altior we're going to talk about the performance that blew gavin away there's so much to get through in this week's show, show so stay tuned now up in the anti viewers don't forget we've got a special treat in store for you it is half price for the first three months, if you sign up to Racing Post Ultimate. Yes, this membership offer, offer, Gavin, like we speak about it every week. It's just a no-brainer. You get to watch replays. You get to see tissue prices. You get to read spotlights. You get to read interviews, Gavin. There's just everything you need to know about so racing. Just, just do it. Racing Post Ultimate. Just do it. Get on with it. Half price, first three months, UP50. UP50. So we're going to kick off with our questions from the crowd. Yes, where you, the viewer, gets to interact with myself and Gavin Lynch. Please send in your questions. We will try to answer as many as we can. Pop them in the comment section on YouTube. Send me a tweet. You can put them on Facebook. Anywhere you watch the show, just leave a comment and ask any question you want. Doesn't matter how stupid it is, Gavin. Okay. We like answering stupid questions. Do. So the first question this week comes in for Scott from Scott Rutherham. And Scott wants to know, surely Min is the best each way bet of the 2021 Cheltenham Festival at 7-1 to one each way in the Ryanair, Gavin. It has to be great each way value. Uh, the great thing about it is uh, he appeared on Sunday, one is third, John Durkin. And he definitely will go for the Ryanair, won't he? Yes. He's a very talented horse. He's rated 169. He ha was unfortunate to run in Altior three years in a row. But um, yeah, massive uh, each way chance at 7 to 1. Now, I have to tease you here because, I mean, how he's not on your team. Like, you've already picked a horse for the Ryanair. Uh, yeah, it's well, like, would it's you like, call him a horse? It's like, it's like picking your Ryder Cup team and leaving Sergio Garcia off. Like, your captain last year was Min, wasn't he? He was, yeah. And, and, I emphasise this so much. It was like, I have to get Min in here. Yeah. You know what you're going to get. Yeah. You know he's going to run a cracker in the Ryanair. Yeah. And this year, I just, I don't know. It's just in the back of my head thinking, he's a year older. Yeah. Novice is coming through. He's nine turning ten. What do you think? I think I might pick him one week just to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be just, uh, after Zana here, that would be a dagger in the heart again. But rock solid. Good rock performance. Rock solid, yeah. Yeah, I'd prefer him to Imperial Aura. They're roughly the same price. I'd go for Min ahead of Imperial Aura at, at the moment. And so would I. I'm just devastated, as Gavin said, that I picked Mr. Fisher and set him in for the Reiner. Our next question this week is a corker. It comes in from Carol Price. And Carol wants to know, Gavin, mm. Annie Power at her best yeah. met Epitant at her best in a champion hurdle. The two of them on song. Who would win? Annie Power. At the moment. At the moment, I'd say Annie Power. Uh, she's a brilliant horse. Uh, she went to Cheltenham three times. Didn't stay the three miles in the stairs. Would have won the mare's hurdle that famous day when she tipped up at the last. Uh, she won the champion famous? hurdle. Infamous, Infamous maybe? Yeah. yeah. Cost everybody a fortune. Saved the bookies money. Um, she wins the champion hurdle by four and a half lengths. She ended up with a rating of 166. Now, she won the champion hurdle even though she was more of two and a half mile mare, really. I think there's very, very few hurdlers ever would be able to beat any power over two and a half mile given her seven pounds. Mm. Epiton has won the champion hurdle, as we all know. She did run bad the previous year. You said it wasn't a worry and you were right. Um, so I think for Epiton to get up to any power, she'll have to win at least another one or two champion hurdles. So is there any chance Epiton would beat anybody? See what I did there? Mm. <laughs> that wasn't very funny. Um, I think for, at the moment, definitely any power, yeah. Yeah, she was a star. A star. And what was her highest rating? 166 and uh, Epiton is currently 162, so... Four pound, wouldn't you think she would have been rated higher? Than yeah, you would. Yeah, you would, you yeah. would, you would. She was a devastating mare, and I'd she have was. to agree. I think at this stage, we would have to say that Annie Parrot was just that little bit better than Epiton Carroll. And our final question this week comes in from Owen O'Regan. Now, we know Owen had a question last week. 
course his question was the best horse never to have won at the yeah. Cheltenham Festival and on a similar team I know we don't like to have people two weeks in a row but just because Owen has given us such a good question we're going to just allow it just about okay. Okay? and Owen wants to know okay, the best jockey and the best trainer never to have won a race at the Cheltenham Festival Gavin Lynch uh, Owen O'Regan last week cost me an hour of my life and yesterday he cost me I'd say two or three hours two hours yeah. three hours in this I question just, I just started doing it it's like uh, on Father Ted when I start chipping at the car. I just kept going and going. Looks all right to me, Ted. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got uh, 18 jockeys here. Ah, oh, you're joking. Now, nine of them you're going to give out to me over. You'll think that... 18 jockeys? Yeah, so here we go, that, right? That should have won a race at Cheltenham? No, they rode at Cheltenham, but didn't ride a winner at Cheltenham. Okay. All right. Am I going to be so, surprised by some of these? No, the first nine you're going to give out to me. Anyway, just hear me out. The first nine is Pat Smullen, Joseph O'Brien, Johnny Murtha, Richard Hughes, Kevin Manning, Shamey Heffern and Warren O'Connor, Stephen Crane, and Kieran Fallon. Okay, okay, that's stupid. Okay, the other stupid. nine. The other nine. James Nash, who wrote a lot of bumper, bumper horses. winners. Yeah. Now I could be wrong on some of these, so just allow me if, if I'm wrong. Captain, you're never wrong. Uh, okay. Second, James Nash, yeah, very good amateur jockey. Yeah. Gordon Elliott. I don't think rode a winner at Cheltenham. Gordon Chatham. Elliott, right? Uh, yeah. Number rode for Martin Pipe, of course. Uh, next is Johnny Burke. Johnny Burke. Yeah. Never had a Cheltenham winner. No. No. Johnny Burke. The next one I'm going for is Ken Morgan. Ken Morgan, yeah, you used to ride River Tark once upon a time. And Carvel's Hill that we mentioned last yeah. week. Uh, I'm also going to mention uh, Bob Champion, I don't think did. Wow. Mm. Uh, Danny Mullins. Was beating a short head, that's yeah. right, yeah. In the bumper, I think. Yeah. David Mullins. David Mullins never had a Chatham winner. No, even though he rode the Grand National winner. And then, I hopefully I haven't left one out, but I have two more for you. Tom Taff, I don't think, rode a Chatham winner. Wow. I spent a half an hour on Tom Taff, so I hope I'm right. And the last one. Am uh, I going to be shocked by this? No. But a really brilliant jockey in his day, especially over hurdles. Long ago? Oh, a good few years ago. Uh, Tony Mullins. Tony? Yeah. Tony never rode a no. winner at Cheltenham. T- Gavin does a fantastic Tony Mullins impression. Go for well, it. I was jocked off Don Run in 86, and I'm still not over, to be honest with you. <laughs> but Tony Mullins, yeah, great jockey. Um, so there's a bundle of jockeys here. Okay. So trainer. Trainer. Now, the one that I came to mind, but just because he's got so many young horses at the minute, and I think it's going to end soon, is Anthony Honeyball. I think he's going to get his chat in the first chat in uh, I just, it? I come up with three. Tom Mullins, Michael Winters, and Jim Bulger. And don't forget, Jim Bulger won two Irish champion hurdles. He'd a Nordic surprise who was fancied for a Supreme and stuff. So there's three more of you. Okay, that's well, It was a great question. So, uh, Owen, I hope you have no more questions. That was very interesting, Owen. You've just ruined Gavin's week because you, Gavin could have been studying winners instead he was studying your question. But a fantastic question from Owen for the last two weeks. That was this week's questions from the crowd. So now we move on to the week that was. Yes, you get to find out the horses that have caught Gavin Lynch's eagle eye. Take it away, Gavin. Uh, nothing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll go to Friday. That's a... That's a... Yeah. Long spell without any eye catchers, Gavin. It is. Uh, we're going to start in Exeter. The big breakaway was 2-9 to nine to beat Bold Plan and didn't. He was giving him um, eight pounds, but even so. It was two miles three. But the big breakaway, he's he's veering a bit left and he's veering a bit right and he's still very green, isn't he? Uh, the word I used would be lethargic. Very lethargic. Everything was an effort. Yeah, sure. Puppy I mean, was having the firemen defences. It was it was an effortless. He's 12-1 to 1 for the RSA. I wouldn't back him at 20s at the minute. He'd want to show an awful lot more next mm-hmm. time out, wouldn't he? Yeah, very disappointing. Uh, Friday in Sandown, another wer- winner for Evan Williams, just like Bold Plan, was a horse I was really, really taken with, is Stargate. So maybe some of the viewers haven't uh, heard of this horse before. Um, he won a point to point. He's now two from two over hurdles. He won easily at Chepstow. He won very easily the other day at Sandown. His jumping is fantastic. Uh, this was two and a half miles. I definitely keep an eye on him. Absolutely. I think you're a bit condescending to our viewers there. Our viewers are... These are experts, okay. Gavin, watching this, okay? They would know exactly who Stargate is. I'll tell you something about this horse. I think if I hadn't tipped the horse in the Ballymore last week, Brave Man's Game, I would be very tempted to tip him for the Ballymore this week because I thought it was as good a novice hurdle performance as we've almost seen this year. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it, it was, was only three runners, but the way he quickened up. The, the second and third uh, rated 130, 137, so it was certainly a high 140s performance. Uh, two things. I thought Nico... The Boyneville was trying to bite his tongue after the race because he didn't want to say exactly how good he thought the horse was and he was trying to play it down but in certain sentences he was kind of going oh hey, I think this is a really yeah. good horse and then Evan Williams the most pessimistic man in the world in the world <laughs> he was more than look, Henry he was on, yeah worse than Henry the Bromhead he was on luck on Sunday on Sunday and uh, Nick Luck was doing everything he could just to say that the horse was in any way decent whatsoever 
And he basically said he was a selling plater. I will take it step by step. Sure, you don't want to be getting carried away about these horses. Yeah. I'll tell you, Evan, if you're watching, get carried away with Stargate because I think he's a superstar. Yeah, he's a good horse. 16 to 1 for the Ballymore, which sounds very fair. On to Saturday and Sandown. And uh, first of all, we start with the King Henry VIII and I was Chase. Uh, all mankind, jumped out, made all. Uh, jumped very well. Um, He's only a four-year-old. The second and third Hitman and, and Galah were also four-year-olds. So <clears throat> you have to remember that in March, uh, the four-year-olds turning five don't get an allowance off level weights. I think it's 11 stone four. He's 10 to one for the Arkle. He wouldn't be necessarily my cup of tea, but he was very impressive. Uh, on to uh, Politolog in the Tingle Creek. Obviously, wow. Altior uh, was wow. a non-runner. Uh, Politolog, the change of tactics that he uses now, bouncing out in front and jumping brilliant as he does. Uh, he won very easily. Bet granted team by seven lengths. He's now 9-1 to one for the champion chase. Right, Gavin Lynch. Yeah. You are a respected member of the racing world, okay? Did Nicky Henderson make the right or wrong decision not running Altier in the Tinkle Creek? In my opinion, 100% the right decision. And whatever the decision an owner and a trainer want to make is the right decision. I think as a race in public, we don't really have the right to castigate people for taking horses out. It's their decision. They pay the bills. Uh, the decision that he made a year ago to run it um, against Suriname and Ascot ruined the horse's season. He's not going to do it again. Uh, I personally think that he made the right decision and he's got a better chance of winning the champion chase because he didn't run on Saturday. Okay, so tell me this, right? You woke up Saturday morning. No, sorry, Friday night. So you actually away on Friday night. A romantic <laughs> night away for Anne-Marie's birthday. You're away on Friday night. I'm sure you were checking your phone as we all do. Yeah. And you saw that Altier wasn't running. Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, how disappointed were you? I was... A nine or a ten because I backed him on Friday afternoon to win on Saturday. So we can all be disappointed. Okay, but, so you lost one money. You lost money. No, no, I got the money back. Oh, you got money back. Yeah. Okay. But what I'm saying to you is we can't be annoyed okay. with Nicky. We can be disappointed but not annoyed. But my point is you were disappointed. Yeah. Nine or ten out of ten. Yeah, yeah, you backed yeah. the horse for that and you were disappointed. Imagine all the other people in the racing world whose Saturday revolved around watching Altier. Not even punters but just racing fans and all they were looking forward to all weekend was watching Altior. Can you understand why there was frustration? You said he was 100% right. Maybe he was, but can you understand the frustration? Absolutely, but if, if I owned the horse and Nicky rang me to say, I don't think we should run, I would have said, yeah, take him out. Was it a welfare issue? I think maybe that was the wrong choice of words or whatever, but okay. uh, the ground was soft on the chase track. You can go through the times. Uh, the ground on the hurdle track was heavy. If he had waited until Saturday and he asked Nico when the 4-7 to seven shot and the 2-11 to 11 shot got beat, what do you think now? He would have said, take him out. Yeah, it would have been worse then. Like, what happened, if he didn't run last year against Surname, and okay. he went to the Desert Orchid Chase instead last Christmas, he would have ran on Saturday. Okay. Now, but, I'm going to ask you a very hard question there. Okay. Because this is a Cheltenham show, okay? Okay. And this is counting down to the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. It's up in the ante. It's anti-post tips for Cheltenham. Does too much of the season revolve around those four days of March? And we love Cheltenham, but is it gone to be too much of a monster? It probably a little bit, but there's nothing you can do. I mean, you can't have it both ways. You can't have an amazing four days of March and then have all these horses running against each other in November, December, January. It's just, it's never going to happen. Yeah. So just let's love Cheltenham for what it is. There you go. That's Gavin Lynch on the Altier saga. Well, I, I'd be with Nicky. I think uh, Nicky was spot on. Uh, let's go to another Nicky horse, uh, Aintree on Saturday, Santini. Now, this horse really annoys me. Well, I'll tell you something, Gavin. He annoys you. I guarantee he annoys me more. Go on. He just, uh, you know, won. yeah, he gets beat by Lakeview Lad. Fair enough, he was giving him six pounds. Lakeview Lad is rated 154. He's a very, very good handicap chaser. But Santini, I was against him last year and he nearly done me in on the Gold Cup a half a length. Uh, he loved the extra trip, three mile two, etc. And there was no fences in the, in the straight a couple of times. Um, but just Santini, he annoys me. He just, this thing of hitting the flat spot and then staying on again, hitting another flat spot, staying on again. At some stage in the last mile in the Gold Cup, he's going to get caught out. For a bit of tall. Yeah, I agree. I thought, watching last year's Gold Cup, I said if it was another 50 yards, he would have got there, right? Yeah. I don't think he would now. I really don't. I think if they went to the Queens and had a point, he still wouldn't have been in yeah. I think he should have won the other day. He should have. Like, it was like one of these races you're watching where you go, he's just going to get there. He's, and then the race is over and you go, oh. how, how, did he not get, yeah. how did he not win the race? Because yeah. bypassing the last fence, you could see the neck, and it was almost as if he was looking over going, Ah, yeah, my just, job here is done, lads. Happy you know, days. Some of the other uh, candidates, Champ would have won that race. Alboom Foda would have won that race. You know, if it turned into a battle. But he just... 
Uh, the one thing that's a bit annoying we're talking about racing is that why was the race run at 2.40? Uh, I think the chases should be run earlier in the cards at this time of the year. Uh, and, you know, the sun is going to be in the same position next Saturday, next year again. So mm -hmm. I think if that was run as the second or third race, we would have had more fences to look at. Yeah, absolutely. But Santini, I would say, went down in my estimations. for the goal. I, yeah. I think he'll definitely be placed in the Gold Cup, but I don't think he's going to yeah, win. I just was never in love with him, but he's definitely going to. He's 9-1 for the Gold Cup. I wouldn't back him 9-1. Uh, Saturday in Chepstow, horse called Oscar Elite uh, for the Tizards. As you might say himself, lovely horse. Uh, looks a stare, 25-1 to for the Bartlett. Worth a mention. On to Navin on Saturday, uh, conflated, um, beat the big getaway by a long way. The big getaway was very, very disappointing. Uh, the time of the race was two seconds quicker than the handicap chase, so it was a good time. Uh, the have we given up on the big getaway? You'd have to see him doing an awful lot more the next day. He got very, very tired in the straight. Um, they're both 25 to 1, conflated for the marsh and the big getaway for the, uh, the RSA. On to uh, Andy Dufresne, uh, who beat him better by three lengths. He looked in trouble two out, but then his jumping got him out of jail. Mm. Yay! Do you like that? Very good. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, uh, he's two from two over fences. I doubt he'll go to Chatham. He might go for the Ryanair Gold Cup at Fairy House, perhaps. I can't figure out this horse. Yeah, he's... Is he a great one horse? Possibly. I don't know. He, can't he, figure him out. Yeah, he's 14 to 1 for the Ark and 14 to 1 for the Marsh. Uh, Kilcrut, I would probably pronounce it as Kilcrut, but I think the Mullins people uh, call it Kilcrut. Uh, bred by Patrick's uh, grandmother. I think it's named after their home place, but that could be wrong. Oh. Um, uh, showed a lovely turn of foot to win the bumper by nine and a half lengths, carrying ten, uh, 12 stone two, and seems very good value of 14 to one for the bumper. Previously trained by your earlier impression? Tony, yeah. Um, Any not done? <laughs> maybe later. Uh, Sunday in Punchestown, as we know, the fog came in. I personally think Brendan Sheridan deserved huge credit to leave it as late as he could because at around the, the first or second race, the fog seemed to be lifting, and then obviously it came down again. So, what can you do? Yeah, frustrating. Very frustrating, yeah. Yeah, how do you think men jumped? Great, <laughs> according to Patrick. Uh, just to mention Sky Ace, uh, a horse who yeah. doesn't seem to get much credit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? I think he's value for the mayor's office hurdle. She's value. She, yeah. Yeah, she, she'd be even better value if she was a he. Yeah. Uh, uh, 20 to 1 for the mayor's novice. It uh, came out of the fog, 30. won very, very easily. And like there was some 33s available. Like she's, she's, she's underrated. Yeah, and she was giving weight away the other day too, so uh, she's decent. Uh, main one is third, uh, John Durkin, as we said earlier in a row. Uh, second, uh, three different turning. jockeys. Really? Can you name them? Uh, Patrick Mullins. Correct. Paul Townend. Correct. Don't know. Best jockey of all time. Ruby. Yay. Good. Uh, Tornado Fire was second, ran a cracker. Mellon was third. Battle over Diane was well beaten fourth. Then came Chris's dream, who needs big gaps between his races. But Alaho was very, very disappointing. Uh, beaten over 30 lengths. Yeah. Uh, Any excuse? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David Mullins said after the race that he made two absolute horrific mistakes. That obviously we didn't see, okay. but knocked the stuffing out of him. All right. One mistake would have done it. Two. Well, that's two good to know. A, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, on to Cork on Sunday, Shaq and Poor uh, Personally, well, I wasn't overly impressed. Wow. No, a uh, little Did bit you? slow, four out, three out. Now, he got beat last year, first time out. Mm. So obviously, he's going to improve a lot. But just to be a few lengths ahead of Jingle come to the last, and even had to get a few nudges to get there yeah. after three out, I just wasn't. I, I was expecting a lot said more. That there's huge improvement to come. Yeah, they'd want to be. Um, Whoa. A three to one for the champion chase seems okay. I wouldn't. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting that there. Somebody uh, chalked it out. Thought you'd be waxing lyrical about Shaq and Purcell. There was two more grade threes. Uh, Mount Ida won very well. She's 25 for the mayor's chase. Uh, Says Gold, who looks a lovely mare. Oh, yeah. Um, she is now 16 to one for the Bartlett. Um, and one last thing is appreciate its form from the last day. Got a boost because Master McShee yeah. won a maiden hurdle very and, easily. And the horse to finish ninth or tenth won a maiden hurdle as well. Yeah, it nearly fell that yeah. day, yeah. Uh, and also just to mention Super Sunday has been retired yeah go. great horse that's the week it was that was the week that was so every week here on Up in the Ante we preview one of the big races at the Cheltenham Festival and this week it's the turn of the Arkle yes at the moment with Betri 6-5 Shishkin is their 6-4 to four favourite 10 to 1 All Mankind, a very impressive winner of the Henry VIII Novices Chase. It's 12 to 1 about Easy Work, 14 to 1 Felix de Jay, and it's 16 to 1 Bar Gavin Shishkin. Shishkin, uh, fantastic horse, winner of the Supreme, was excellent in Kempton, deserves to be 6 to 4 favourite. I wouldn't find many flaws in him. He should have won the Supreme far easier, so he's the right favourite. I was going to say that if, if I was a bookmaker right now, I would have betting without in the Arkle in the marsh and in the champion hurdle why not yeah because bookies can just bet to 120 percent you have your margin you're going to make a profit probably on it 
I would love to see Beth in those three races without the favour. Yeah. Just to see. And I guarantee you, bookies would get a, a decent punt on it. Well, you get on to Bet365 yeah, and I see think when they, they open up a betting without market. I think it'd be a great bet. Um, Shishkin is 6 to 4, Bet365. These famous, famous Gavin Lynch multiples. Is Shishkin in any or many? A few. A few. But uh, just uh, the price was always a bit of an issue, wasn't it? Okay. And was he in any multiples before he won a Kempton? No. Oh, that's but I think my, I might be in a few multiples of 2 to 1 or something. Okay. Um, what I'll say to you is I think there's nine horses here in the betting who are undefeated over fences, just to keep it in perspective. Okay. So Shishkin's undefeated. All Mankind's 2 from 2. Easy Work 1 from 1. Felix de G is 2 from 2. Andy Dufresne is 2 from 2. Unaccepted is 1 from 1. Energamine, who I was madly impressed with, is 1 from 1. Black Bow, 1 out of 1. And Janadil also. Yeah, the only thing to say there now is, Gavin, it's the first week of December. Did one of you, if you're thinking about winning an Arkell, you want to be unbeaten after your I know, chase. but I'm just saying that, it, you know, it's not just about Shishkin. There are plenty oh, of horses yeah. that could get up to his level, okay. but he's already at least 155 level or 160 mm. level, isn't he? Okay, so. uh, All Mankind, we spoke about him at the weekend. Does he kind of add intrigue to the race because you know he's just going to go whoosh? Yeah, he's actually great for an Arkell. It's great to see a bit of pace. Guaranteed in the race. pace, yeah. yeah. Uh, the one thing he'll say, similar to a champion hurdle, it's very hard for a five year old. As we know, Vipura Steadies was the last one, I think, in 2006 or something. So not getting the weight against a bigger, older horse is probably quite tricky. Okay, so 10 to 1 value? No. I wouldn't be. Okay, that, no. easy work 12 to 1? Yeah, just will easy work run here or would it go on the marsh or would it Crying go on the marsh? for a step up and trip. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. so. So yeah. maybe not here. Felix de I think Felix de will go here. One in Killarney, it somehow won in Punchestown, even though it went, jumped out to its left. Yeah. So going the other way around will, it will suit so a fair So all better. mankind and Felix de Jay in the same race. The winning time will probably be about two and a half minutes, will it? <laughs> They'll go some lick, yeah. And the horse that I'm really interested in is Energamine. Uh, yeah, you its, love him. Yeah, it won his uh, beginner's chase over two and a half mile. Uh, eight seconds quicker than Animix, even though it was carrying seven pounds more. <clears throat> so a very fast time, uh, one by 18 lengths. Um, I don't know, is Enric Amin going for the Arkell, the Marsh or the RSA? Nobody knows. So <laughs> It's hard to believe like he's yeah. got that versatility. You don't really yeah, know. Yeah, because he's won over two and a half. So, um, yeah, the Arkell, Janadil, a lovely horse. Uh, unaccepted, jumped fantastically well. Captain Guinness, who is due to run on Sunday, punched down. That, that's going to be this Friday. Yeah. Friday, yeah. So, so rescheduled for Friday. I'd love to see him come and bolt up. And we still haven't seen Elixir Dene, yes. who we're both a big fan of. Yeah. Oh, I don't like to see your face No, there. I'm just saying, it's a bit of a, uh, there's been a couple of two-mile chases in the last week or two, so you'd want to see him out soon, that's oh, all. Oh, no. Have you bad news No, me? I don't. I don't. I'm just saying you'd like to have seen him. God, yeah, I know, uh, I agree, yeah. Shishkin, the right favourite, uh, but I'd love to see Betting Without. Okay, and if there was Betting Without, who would you go for? Energamine? Maybe, or, I don't maybe Felix Tegi. I don't know yet. I don't know. Okay. I'd like to see them run again. Okay, obviously Shishkin for me as well. Six to four. Would you want to back him at six to four? Like on the day, he's probably going to be four to five, eight to eleven. Like Sprinter Sacra, when he won his arc, it wasn't yeah. even like one to four. Like he was, I think yeah. he was just as on. Like so. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't really back him at six to four at the minute, no. No. Okay. There you go. Shishkin, big fans of Shishkin. You're up in the ante. So what's happening this week, folks? Of course, it is the Caspian Caviar Gold Cup. I kind of like that name. I kind of. Yeah. Caspian Caviar Gold Cup, yeah. Bit of International hurdle, obviously, at Cheltenham on Saturday as well. And we've the added bonus, Gavin, of the Peterborough Chase at Cheltenham on Friday, uh, where we could see the unbelievably talented Mr. Fisher. Yes, that would be the highlight of the week, all right? Yeah. yeah For you? Yeah. Can he redeem himself? I sure, maybe. We'll have to give him... Is he just no good, Gavin? Have I just got him wrong? No, he's, he is good, but... Just not that good? I don't know. Yeah, is he okay. up to winning right now? I wouldn't think well, so. Well, this is last chance saloon now, right? Last chance saloon. Yeah, he'd want to show if, that. If he's beaten in the Peterborough Chase on decent ground at Cheltenham on Friday, I'm going to have a word with our team of graphics experts. And I'm going to get him off my anti-post list. I'm going to get him raised. Yeah, well, yeah. look, if the ground is decent, he's got no more excuses, really. No more excuses. And hopefully this time next week, we're going to be standing here talking about Mr. Fisher, yeah. single-figure price for the Ryanair Chase. That's yeah. the dream, Gavin. Please, God. Uh, Caspian Caviar Gold Cup. What do you like? Um, I don't know. No opinion really. Master Tommy Tucker, I think, is eleven to two favourite. I'll dance for seven to one. Um cool Cody, maybe. Yeah, won the Paddy Power Gold yeah. Cup, yeah. Uh, eight to one. Uh, I, I like this race. Uh, Master Tommy Tucker, obviously I'm a big fan of, but I thought all year I was praying Venetia Williams would go straight to this race with CPAS. He ran it last year, he finished fourth. He's off a mark of 155. To put his I think he goes best fresh, and to put his 
seasonal reappearance last year into perspective, he was trying to give Riders on the Storm seven pound at Aintree. Okay. Seven pound. There was 12 lengths back to the third that day. It was an unbelievable performance. I think Old Grange Road was third. I think he's a little bit fragile and I think you need to catch him first time out. I think he is definitely the best. He is an unbelievable jumper of a fence. He's definitely the best jumper in the race. And obviously, Master Tommy Tucker running against Seepage. I love both horses, but I just think Seepage, if he gets into a rhythm, if he can repeat that performance at Aintree from last year, first time out, like, uh, uh, Riders on the Storm went on to be rated, I think, £22 higher than he was that day. So that was a hell of a okay. performance. So uh, Seepage for me, Gavin. Good luck with that one. International Hurdle. Yeah, Goshen is 2-1, to one, So Royal 9-2, Chittabello 7-2, a song for someone who's very impressed with Ascot 6-1. to one. Well. Um, song for someone needs soft ground, so it depends on which where one Where are comes. we with Goshen, Gavin? I don't know where we are. We're going to have to see uh, this weekend. Obviously beaten twice in the flat, uh, which was very, very disappointing. He has to go and win and win impressively, really, to be a mm. champion hurdle horse. And will he? I'd have to watch him. I, I won't have a bet in this race, really. Uh, I'd like song for someone, but I think he needs softer ground. Okay. I just have so. a feeling Goshen's going to do it. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see him win. And, Gavin, what are you going to do on Sunday? Don't no know. Irish racing on Sunday. I usually go cycling Sunday morning and then race back to get to see the racing, so I'll be in no hurry this <laughs> Sunday. But uh, also to mention, I think Court made it have a right chance if she runs on Friday, and I think maybe Easy's Land might win as well. Okay. Easy's Land and Court made for Gavin Lynch at Chatham on Friday. That's what's happening this week. Now it's time to have a look at our anti-post portfolio so far. The horses that me and Gavin have already tipped up for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. We won't spend too long at this, Dave, I don't think. No, we won't spend too long on mine anyway. Uh, a quick look at my selection so far. Uh, Mr. Fisher hopefully will redeem himself. 33-1 to 1 for the Ryanair Chase. Brave Man's Game last week, 20-1 to 1 for the Ballymore. Sire de Berlay, he's kind of my min this year at the minute now. <laughs> he's minute, yeah. my min. Uh, sorry to relay 10 to 1 for Castro the stairs Castro know. Vitera hopefully we haven't seen her over hurdles yet but she's for the mayor's novices hurdle uh, St. Roy Galvin Sorry to Berle Tower Bridge I did a double end by Alan and Honeysuckle and Zana here uh, 6 to 1 last week has been very 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 well supported since because of very the well supported yeah so Everybody tells me all the shrewd judges fancy Zana here. Okay. I think that's you and not me, to be honest. I know. Yeah. But uh, look, Grant. Grant. Yeah. Long way to go between Long December go. and March, Gavin. Long way to go. So there's a quick look at our anti post portfolios. Yes, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It is time for the latest installment of anti post picks for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. And Gavin, Gavin got excited this week. He did like hours upon end studying every single day. So Gavin's got two selections and I've got one, but I'm going to have two next week and Gavin is going to have one. So you've two this week, Gavin. Yes. And they're, they're a bit from left field this week. Um, there's one, uh, the first one I'm going to go for is a horse you might have heard of called Altior. You are putting up Altior? Yep. This is the most un-Gavin Lynch-like uh, thing I've ever heard. Sort of. Uh, is that your stats man? Stats man, yeah. You're uh, a young horse man. Um, the yeah, I'd be ageist in terms of your ageist. Yeah. yeah, everything that you've said on mm -hmm. this show ever says Altior cannot win the championship. I just think that at seven to one, the most important thing is to get a bit of value. I think seven to one certainly underplays his chance. Okay, like you're talking about, put the kettle on at eight to one and Politolog at nine to one. You know, he's nearly the same price as those two. He's run against Politolog three times and beaten it up a stick three times. So I think Altior at seven to one is great Very value. Very short stick now in the Queen Mother, and he's just about <laughs> better. Um, He's 10 turning 11. The last horse to do it was Moscow Flyer, who had a rating of 180 uh, back in uh, 2005. So it has been done. It has been done, yeah. Okay. And there was a horse in the 70s, one that had 11 and 12 as well. So. And of course, uh, uh, when Miss Moscow Flyer did, he beat Well Chief and Azerti up. Or okay. Azerti up. <laughs> um, so I just think it's got a great chance. In the last 19 months, it's only ran twice. Um, it ran, obviously, was second to surname. Um, and then it went and won the Game Spirit in February. Now, after it won the Game Spirit in February, what price was it for the champion chase? It was 2-1 to favourite. Yeah, it's at 15 day, 2-1. to one, yeah. So, I think if it comes out and wins the Desert Orchid at Christmas and then goes and wins the, the Game Spirit, there's not a chance it'll be 7-1 to one of the day. Okay, not a I want to find out the process here. Okay, so you're kind of thinking all week what you might tip up on the show and you obviously take great pride in your picks. When did the light bulb moment come and say, I'm going to tip Altior? I'd say, I love the fact that it... it for Cheltenham, I love the fact that it didn't run on Saturday okay. and tear the heart out of it like it did last year. And did Shaq and Persuade have Yeah, I just wasn't blown away by Shaq and Persuade. I know it's going to improve a lot, but I just think Altior, 20 wins out of 21 over hurdles and fences, has won four times the Cheltenham Festival, won the Supreme of the Arc, won the Champion Chase twice. Like, 
what is the horse to do? The only negative is the age. It has been done before. But the other thing to notice is that uh, Shackman Persois is nine. Uh, he's turning nine and Politolog is turning ten. So they're not that much younger than him. No. And I just think seven to one is the wrong price. I think it should be five to one. Okay. This is very interesting. Very interesting. I have to say, Altior seven to one, Gavin Lynch for the champion chase. I was shocked when you told me. Yeah, I just think he's the best horse in the race. That's can't say fairer than that, Gavin. Your second selection. Second this week. one is uh, what race? The champion bumper. Okay. Now I'd be very, very afraid of Sir Gerhard. Okay. And because he hasn't, I thought he might run in the maiden hurdle in the last couple of weeks. He hasn't. So I would imagine he'll end up in the champion bumper. He'd be very, very hard to beat. But uh, I just think at the prices, uh, Kilcrot or Kilcrut, that one at the weekend. Mm. Um, I think he's a very, very good horse. You were very impressed. Yeah. Uh, he ran in a bumper last April. Uh, Patrick rode for Tony. And Tony told him he was a right horse. Down in that. <laughs> and uh, he was second that day. Willie trains it now. The horse has got older and is more experienced. But the other day, um, it bolted up by nine and a half lengths. I did a time comparison with the first race of the day. We love a Gavin Lynch time comparison. Uh, it was won by Magic Tricks, who looked to have a right yeah, bit of toe. Yeah, horse. So I timed it from the third last to the line. Um, from the third last to the second last, they were the same time. But from the second last to the line, Kilcrut, as I'm going to call him, um, beat it by two and a half seconds, which is the equivalent of 10 lengths. It's four lengths a second, really, on soft ground. <clears throat> the other thing as well is that um, Master Tricks, Magic Tricks rather, carried 11.9, and Kilcrut carried 12 stone two. Ooh. So it's seven pounds more. He was 10 lengths quicker. I just think... Um, he, was, he showed loads of gears. Patrick was interviewed on Sunday about Min and stuff mm. and he asked about Kilcrut and he said that um, he can see him being... Ranking highly. Yeah, ranking highly in the season for bumpers. So I, I think he's got a great chance. I did a, a couple of Chatham preview nights last year with Tony Mullins and the horse actually ran, I think, just before Chatham or was it just after Chatham? Yeah, it was, it was during lockdown, yeah. Yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And Tony just couldn't stop saying how good this horse was. Like, and I'd say everybody that was at the Chatham preview night back in the day when you could go to a Chatham preview night and he was saying, this horse will win. I'd say everybody that well, was... Well, actually, there was, there was a huge amount of money for him the night before yeah. in Clamel because people had heard Tony talk yeah. about him. But um, I think that... Travelled well at Clamel. I did. Uh, I think Let's Be... The, the Gavin Cromwell horse that's in the betting with the bumper. Yeah. Uh, is it Let's Be Clear About It? Or yeah. One of those. Uh, I think that's probably not going to Cheltenham. So the two bumper horses that have stood out so far for me are Sir Gerhard is 4-1 to one and Kilcrut who's 14-1. to one, so. Excellent. 14-1. to one. I think that's your biggest price selection so far, Gavin. It could be, yeah. Kilcrut or Kilcrut... 14 to 1 for the Weatherby's champion bumper is Gavin Lynch's latest selection. So now, Gavin, it's time for mine. Now, I'm going to limber up for this one, right? Because right, go on. it's a big one. Okay. It's a big call. It could backfire spectacularly. <laughs> could backfire. It is surname in the Magners Cheltenham Gold Cup. Okay, before I go on, go your on. first impressions? Uh, I'll, I'll just say interesting. Well, what do you really think? I just. Bonkers. What price is it? 16 to 1. Bonkers. As I said last year on the, up on the ante, just to tell you about betting works, if you put 10 euro on at 16 to 1, you lose 10 euro. <laughs> I okay. just don't think you stay three mile two. Yeah, okay, right, yourself. that's fair enough, okay. I think with surname, and I have to say, I was on the show with you last year, mm -hmm. and I never gave surname credit. I thought he bullied horses and handicaps, and his rating was false, I thought, when he was rated the top staying chaser at the end of last year, I thought, it's it's bonkers. You know, this is ridiculous. Album photo is the best horse, blah, blah, Okay. I think at Weatherby, we saw something different in surname. And the main reason why I'm putting him up at 16 to 1 is because I am convinced he will win the King George. Now, I mean utterly convinced he'll win okay. the King George, okay? And I'll tell you why. Last year, he went into the King George on the back of that bruising battle with Alex Yard Ascot, okay? I think you can almost flip Clandes Oboe and surname this year because Sir... Uh, last year, Clan Zobo had a kind of an enjoyable experience at Down Royal. You know, ran a nice race and then was obviously better in the King George. I thought Clan Zobo had a bit of a grueler this year okay. in the Betfair chase. And we know that race at Haydock can take a lot out of horses. And run against Bristol the Bay. We saw what happened to Lost in Translation. I think that would have taken it out of Clan Zobo. Whereas Surname went to Wetterby and just loved it. Just absolutely adored what he His was jumping doing. jumping was brilliant. He yeah. enjoyed himself. He was brilliant. And I think... I think he's not just going to win the King George. I think he's going to win it convincingly. Okay. And I can't believe I'm saying that because I never thought I would hear myself speaking so positively about surname. But I've turned full circle. And my point is, if he wins that King George impressively, where else is he going to go? Only the Gold Cup, okay? And I think he'll be 13-2, to 6-1 to one for the Gold Cup okay. if he wins the King George, which I think he will. We know now he can go left-handed. The trip is the concern. 
The trip is definitely the concern. Just listen to Harry Cobden speaking. He says he's not going to be as aggressive with him in the King George. He thinks he's a more relaxed horse now. He might even take a lead in the King George. If he does that and if he relaxes, he's a brilliant jumper who's the highest rated chaser in training. Okay. Who's trained by a master in Paul Nichols who knows what you need to win a gold cup. I just think it's 16 to 1. I think it's value, Gavin. It's worth taking a chance. It's just worth taking a chance. And I like taking chances. Mm, As we said last week, I like taking chances. 16 to 1 surname for the Gold Cup. There will be people watching this and they will be shouting at their screens. <laughs> telling me I'm an idiot. And maybe I am. But sure. It's all different opinions. We all love an idiot. So 16 to 1 surname with Bet365 Bet for the big one. The Magners Cheltenham Gold Cup. So that's it, folks. That's it for episode five of Up in the Anti Gavin. I meant to say it to you. Yeah. I did my first proper cycle oh, last good, week. Did yeah. You, did you wear a check shirt? Did you? 40, no, I didn't wear the check shirt. Wore a helmet, though. Well, yeah, good, good, helmet, good, yeah. good. How many did you do? Uh, I did 40 kilometres. Good. Yeah. Would you notice? Start. Yeah. Would you notice? Yeah, very good. Yeah, the weight is falling off me. 40 kilometres. And just to mention, I've set up a Facebook page. Uh, so if you want to check out Facebook, Coast to Cora. Coast to Cora. And in that, in the profile picture, you'll see, if you click on the profile picture. You in it? Uh, no, uh, there's um, a schedule for the whole day of what time we're at each race course and so on. And there's a link to the GoFundMe page, or you can go to GoFundMe, Coast Cora, and throw in a few quid. And Gavin, it's the best cause. It is like, the best cause, yeah. It's cancer close trials to all Ireland. of our hearts. Absolutely, like, yeah. Cancer Trials Ireland cannot get enough money. So if you back a winner, if you have a few extra quid, Cancer Trials Ireland, we or if know. If you want to come along on the day and cycle a little bit or a lot, and It'd if they do Gavin, day. they might get to meet you. Yeah, that'd be great. Imagine that's a nice little prize for everybody. You get to meet Gavin if you come on the cycle. But check out Facebook, uh, Coast to Curra. You'd be cycling on your own. I could. <laughs> so there you go. That's this week's show, for folks. Enjoy this week. Plenty of good racing. The Caspian Caviar Gold Cup. You've got the International Hurdle. And you've got the Peterborough Chase at Cheltenham on Friday. We're going to be back next Tuesday. And in the meantime, if you're going to have a bet this weekend, remember, gamble responsibly. Only bet what you can afford to lose. 